Hey guys, Steven here. Uh, yeah, so I picked up an old set of PAR56 lights and I've uh, swapped them. I'm in the process of swapping out uh, eight of the cans with a brand new LED uh, pot lights. Uh, I just wanted to document a little bit of the process in case anyone's interested in how to do it. It's super simple, provided you have a little bit of electrical know how and safety, uh, uh, common sense, and such. Uh, yeah, so I'll swap this around. Yeah, so this here, you can see the top lights, top bars have already been done. Uh, those, those are just some straight up uh, LED pots. Um, pretty much took out the old uh, PAR56 300 watt bulbs, incandescent, and replaced them with uh, either 75 watt bulb uh, equivalents. And they're plenty bright. Anybody going into a into a uh, you know small venue uh, town hall type of thing, these are bright enough. You know it's not that quite as warm as the original Par 56s as you can see. Uh, they have that nice amber glow when they when they dim out. The ones up top they're not quite the same. But you know what? It's way easier on the outlet that you're going to be plugging into. Uh, each one of those uh, pot lights are about 160 lumen at, at full brightness and what's really nice about them is that you can adjust the uh, color temperature and I have them down uh, I think 2700 Kelvin so it gets close to that amber light it's not quite all the way there but you can dim them which is really neat you can get really close to that effect uh, they just don't go there automatically like they are doing right now right now it's hooked up through a soundboard that the these uh, bars came with I'll quickly show you what I've been using. So, you can see this here. Get the light on. There we go. So, right now I'm using the Halo Home or sorry, Halo replacement packs here. You can buy them at Home Depot. I think they work up to about 35 bucks a pop. You can buy them individually or you can get this contractor pack. And uh, what's really interesting is that uh, they fit right in, man. They don't even have, there's nothing that you need to do in order to uh, really customize the mounting. The only thing I've done is uh, I cut out the, yeah, cut out the par and their lighting. I take, out, take it out that 300 watt bulb. Uh, let's see if I can... Here's what they look like. This is like a 200, 250 watt bulb from that guy there that I probably won't be using, but got it in the in the package anyways. But yeah, so these, I cut out the, these guys were uh, uh, crimped down uh, inside the uh, in, inside the fixture. These are uh, Yorkville uh, LP uh, 304s with a LP 608 controller. Anyway, so that's how they came. Uh, they call these, uh, I think I believe the Mongol or Mongrel uh, connection or uh, socket, I should say. It's 124, uh, 120 volt. Bulb. These bulbs are good. I'll probably end up selling them after I'm all done. I got another uh, modification I'm going to do. I got a set of, uh, got a set of four of these guys. And uh, I think they're going to be really neat. This is something I'm playing around with. I'm not getting, not really getting back into doing gigs. It's just something for myself. I really enjoy uh, playing around and fixing up old old gear. I got a couple other things on the go, which is going to really complement the whole setup. But uh, I like that little grungy look. I redid all the electrical wiring was kind of pulled out and fixed that all up. And I'm going to redo all these these cans. Like even these ones here snugged up the, the cords and such, made sure there wasn't any uh, any wires getting frayed or anything like that. I'm going to uh, reset the one at the bottom here, they're getting pulled. These didn't really have a, a nice bag or anything. So yeah, so I got these guys to replace. I'll rip, these, rip the cans open, tidy them up and show you what I'm going to do. And then I got something special for these guys. It's gonna be a whole new custom custom piece. Won't even, these won't even look the same by the time I'm done. So I'm actually uh, quite excited to see how that's gonna come together. Anyways, we'll uh, check in with the next uh, segment here.
All right, so this is the second segment here. So yeah, I ripped apart the uh, the backs of all these cans, pulled out you know more of those bulbs. So I kind of explain to you what's going on here. So this is the back of those pot lights. So this piece right here um, comes with like mounting brackets and their tabs on the side here. What I ended up doing was uh, just unscrewing. So those guys right there that kind of just hold hold the back plate in uh, in piece. So took the screw off of there, added a washer, and that washer is for a six millimeter bolt. It actually slides right in between that little uh, that little opening right there, uh, and then you can kind of just uh, lock it into place, screw it, screw everything down. Just remember everything's these are plastic, so they're not not ripping on them. But I just needed to be stationary because these things will be moved and such. So out of the box, uh, th these ones particular, in particular came with uh, kind of the, I think it was like a permanent mount um, setup. Different, a little bit different than the Moretz. Because once you put uh, a wire uh, in here, uh, it's going to clamp down with, uh, with some locking teeth. Not a big uh, important uh, detail, but you're supposed to use, uh, it's supposed to be meant for like, you know, doing pot lights in the ceiling where you have a, a, a solid core copper wire to push in. Won't work with uh, stranded stuff. Uh, you can kind of see it here. They've actually had to solder their own wires to create a solid core to push into these connectors. So, the back here. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. I put my, put my flash on here. All right, there we go. So I had to do the same thing. So what I ended up doing was pull the little wiring out from the uh, back of the lights. And I just put some solder on it on the tips. Just use the lighter. And what will end up happening is I will then just insert them into those uh, those permanent moret. Uh, uh, connectors there and that's all nice and done what I'll end up doing though is I'll end up uh, I'll end up uh, basically cutting this guy right off and just using the, the ground strap uh, to the uh, grounding location on the uh, par can itself try to use as many of the uh, factory locations as possible they're there uh, for safety features for a reason and uh, you know Will I ever sell this thing? Probably not. Probably for my own use, my own risk. So uh, that being said, there may become a time where these get passed uh, passed on, or maybe I do end up selling them. I want to make sure that these things are be as safe as possible, as safe as uh, as they were ever intended. So if you look at the one next to it, this guy still has a connector inside. I just wanted to do like kind of side by side, show you the process. Uh, ended up cutting that loose. Uh, there is a little black uh, grommet in there. Popped that out, and I tr uh, folded back, slid back the uh, that thermal uh, sheath, and cut out the connectors themselves. As you know, as with those red uh, red crimps, they all have it. I, I, at first, I thought maybe this was like a home job. Someone else had already been in here and replaced these things, but they're all like that. Uh, not soldered or anything, so I just cut them out. I'm going to try to save the sockets just in case someone else may have a use for them. Uh, I'll never, I'll probably never put these back to uh, the original PAR 56s. But, uh, you know, you never know. Someone might have a use for it. But yeah, so I guess to show you a little bit closer of how we mounted this. So these little pot lights actually have little tabs. They're supposed to tuck into your ceiling uh, and, and suck the PAR uh, can up. And nice and flush to your drywall as there's usually a little cavity all you would do these are the slim fitting things uh, you would cut a hole in your uh, in your drywall pop these guys up and in and you're done no need for a can or anything these are supposed to be direct replacements for that um, well what ends up happening though is if you just keep them folded forward uh, they actually snug right against the securing ring right in between it this one, yeah, they make a really nice solid connection. These are nice and tight. They're not gonna go anywhere. Man, I'm 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 super stoked on how this all uh, turned out. 
think I might actually put those these little tabs on the outside of the ring. I think that's how I have it on the on uh, those guys up there. And uh, just to make a nice secure connection, uh, make sure everything's nice and snug. It makes it a nice uh, a nice little system that now you can port you can port around, not have to worry about things falling out of place. The uh, yeah, and it's just the, the change in wattage. Like, and here's a crazy thing too. Uh, it probably hasn't been done to a great extent yet because uh, technology and uh, LEDs uh, that you try to dim, if you don't have the right dimmer, they'll end up flickering, acting really goofy. But in uh, 2022, these actually came out in uh, 2021, I believe. These things are meant, they're meant to work with any type of dimmer. Uh, so they have like their built-in everything the circuitry is all built into these boxes uh, It's meant to handle the the drop-in voltage for whatever type of dimmer switch you have They're supposed to be universal and not have to you shouldn't have to worry too much about uh, Worrying if this will dim or not they work they work just fine uh, I think that's probably what maybe some people may have been you may have been eyeballing these before and you're thinking a lot of They don't work they little the the dimming, I had to buy a special dimmer for these things, and yeah, that was the past. These things work just fine right now, and uh, like I, I don't think I mentioned before, these are the six-inch um, pot light replacements. You can get four-inch or six-inch. These six-inch ones are perfect for these, uh, for my application, anyways. I don't know what kind of uh, par 56s you guys may have. You may have like a, a different mounting, how whatever it might the case may be. But uh, these fit just perfect in mine. Uh, I'm sure they would fit perfectly in in uh, whatever you may have. You may have to make a small bracket adjustment or get a little creative on it. But really, that's all it that's all it is. I take out the bulbs, put these guys in, mount that uh, mount the box to the back of the par now, and uh, the case goes uh, over top with plenty of room, and they light up just fine. And uh, as I was mentioning before, they do have uh, different uh, different color temperatures. So like I said, I, I, I put them down to 2700. Like I said, it's just not, it gets amber, not quite that amber, not as much as I'd like it to be. But you know, these things have uh, brackets for gels, so I can just get an amber gel if I really wanted to and just leave it if I really needed that amber light. Um, but yeah, if you want that bright white, let's say if you're going to repurpose your pars, maybe for like a shop light or something, something that you need, um, maybe to do your own projects and such, these this focused light would be perfect if you had a, I say, turn it up to the 5000K, that, that bright white um, would be just, just minty. And yeah, it's just a flip of a switch. All I have to do is open up this can and I can switch them if I needed to. I'm probably always going to leave it on that 2700 for this purpose for just uh, some fun little stage lighting. And yeah, like I mentioned, uh, these guys are the LP304s with a LP608 uh, controller. Sound activated, computer controlled, if you could believe that, back from the 90s. It actually has, I don't know if you can see that, the... Uh, there is a patch cable I'm running into uh, just a little processor there. On my, yeah, you don't get into all that. All my speakers are all funny and goofy. But anyways, that's an audio output that goes directly into this machine. And so it picks up the audio. No external microphone. I know those, anyone's ever tried to do like little park hands on sound active mode. As soon as you crank up the volume, it's just like a strobe effect because it just can't keep up. I haven't found a... A nice little controller that could uh, could really uh, differentiate between the highs and the lows, and you know, bounce with the beat. And it all just got too loud, and it just would just go haywire, and that's no fun. But anyways, I bought this little setup. Like I said, I got four of these uh, bars, and the other two are gonna be a different project. I'll show you later. But uh, yeah, so one of the things to also look out for, because well, with myself, anyways, because this is a used unit, I got these. Uh, dirt cheap and there's a reason they was there they're questionable if they were going to work number one number two just looking at them you knew they weren't going to be safe to operate at uh at any kind of uh serious capacity so it's stuff like that it's really simple to fix uh as long as the wires aren't cracked and frayed i'll take a good look at them when i get into it 
but uh, all you do is you're just unscrewing this, this that little black cap, making sure everything is nice and tight again. Tighten up that, that little uh, grommet connector. Might have to flatten out some metal if I have to, but I'll end up uh, just pushing that wire back in, getting it past the point where it's uh, already cracked off. Have it seat a little bit further up around here, and now it's a nice safe unit to use again. And if you look in here, yeah, you can see where that thermal sheet is. I ended up taking out that little black clip. Uh, just trying to, I'm, you can, I'm doing a little extra because I think maybe some some people may have some interest in these connectors and the pars if they really really want to retro do something else with them, or they need their own replacements and they want to keep this warm stage lighting. Um, but if you're just doing it yourself and you don't care about that stuff, I'll just, just chop it right off right there. No problem. You don't have to go the extra mile. Like, yeah, you just you cut it. You can cut it right here. You don't have to, if you're not uh, too worried about uh, saving any of that stuff. Make it make the job a little quicker. I'm taking my time because I've got it, I guess. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's really all there is to it. Nice and simple. Uh, like I said, $35 a pop. And those lights, they, uh, they're, they're fantastic. This is the front of them. Nice and simple. Like I said, they're six inch, uh, six inch wide uh, pots, pot replacements, and uh, 120 volt work just fine. I don't know uh, where you might be viewing this, but uh, I'm sure you you can probably figure out the the 240 volt if you're in the Europe or you know, uh, South America and things like that where the, the voltage may be different. But uh, you should be able to find them pretty easy. Just make sure they're dimmable. They're like I said, the new technology that's out there. These things. This is the Halo version. I think I've seen Globe. Uh, also has another set quite similar. I, I trial and errored these things too before I ended up buying the whole kit. I bought one at a time, plugged one in, made sure it worked, and uh, before I went went ahead and and uh, bought the whole thing and uh, tested it. It worked just fine. These things are. It's gonna be a little game changer. I say you make make the old look new, and you're laughing. You know you, these things aren't gonna go to the scrap heap. Not gonna sit in somebody's basement and just collect dust anymore. You know, might I'll actually get a little bit of use out of them. We gotta do a little, couple block parties here at home, and uh, these will be just fine. And they'll light up the street, and I won't have any any real issues. Like it's we're probably only go till about ten o'clock at night. You know, if I was doing an arena, it might be like complimentary lights. Not going to be quite as vibrant and bright as those uh, 200, uh, 300 watt uh, bulbs, but you know what? There's uh, they're way better on uh, way better on the whole power consumption, and uh, yeah, your circuits are gonna gonna love you for it. And yeah, you know, make them nice and safe, just in case the next person that picks them up, they don't want to have to go through this whole process. I picked these up at a at an an estate sale. So these guys, these guys are probably just sitting in somebody's basement and then uh, got forgotten about. I'm sure if they were out on the on the stage and being gigged again, I'm sure they would have been uh, cleaned up and made safe. But uh, that's it for now. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy. Hope you liked it.